Hi, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News TV. So can dengue virus be sexually transmitted? That was a question posed by uh, Dr. Wilders Smith in the Journal of Travel Medicine, actually earlier this year. And in, in the introduction of the article, she says, non-mosquito-borne transmission is well described for dengue virus. Many routes have been reported, um, including mucio mucocutaneous exposure, needle stick injuries, and laboratory accidents, blood transfusion, bone marrow transplant, organ transplant, intrapartum and perinatal transmission, and breastfeeding. Although these type of reports are very, very rare. Now, international travelers returning to non-dengue endemic countries have often unmasked such non-vector transmission. Now, sexual transmission for Zika virus, a flavivirus, another arbovirus, very closely related to the dengue, uh, was first reported in a traveler before uh, the explosion of Zika virus outbreak in the Americas and, and is thought to have contributed to about 1% of all Zika cases in travelers. So we did see a lot of that, and we're going to go ahead and touch on that before we talk about this most recent case that's really um, made a lot of uh uh, excitement in the news of recent. And if we go back to this report out of, 2011 report out of emerging infectious diseases about non-vector borne transmission of Zika virus in Colorado. Um, what we had here is a couple of American scientists were working in Senegal, uh, doing mosquito sampling projects and during the project, both reported being bitten quite often by uh, wild 80 species mosquitoes in the evening. They soon after packed up, went back to Colorado, and uh, started seeing symptoms when they got back home. And patient one started seeing symptoms in late August, including swelling of the ankles, a rash, fatigue and headache, um, and, and more and more different symptoms that are dengue related. Uh, patient two experienced symptoms during about the same time frame, including a rash, fatigue, and headache, and all that. And um, acute phase blood samples were obtained from both patients on September 2nd. Now there's a patient three here, and that's a nurse and the wife of patient one. And she started developing clinical symptoms a few days after that, including malaise, chills, headache, photophobia, muscle pain. Uh, again, no detectable fever. And they go on to say that um, convalescent phase blood samples were drawn uh, on patients one and two and patient three in late September. And acute phase and convalescent phase paired sero samples from the three patients were tested independently. Um, results of virus isolation were negative on all samples, but serological samples uh, did show some uh, matching results of um, antibody titers and elevated levels for Zika virus as one of them. Complement fixation tests against Zika virus also confirm these interpretations. So they go down and just talk about the conclusions. It says evidence suggests that patients one and two were infected with Zika virus, probably in southeastern Senegal, by the bites of infected mosquitoes. Um, results also support Zika transmission from patient one to patient three. Pa again, patient three is the wife of patient one, who's a nurse who was in the United States the whole time. Patient three had never traveled to Africa or Asia, never left the U.S. since 2007. Zika virus has never been reported in the Western Hemisphere at that time. Um, circumstantial evidence suggested direct person-to-person, -person, possibly sexual transmission of the virus. Furthermore, patients one and three, right, the husband and wife, reported having vaginal sexual intercourse in the days after patient one returned home but before the onset of his clinical illness. It is reasonable to suspect that infected semen may have passed from patient one to patient three during coitus. Another possibility is that 
Direct contact and exchange of other body fluids, such as saliva, could have resulted in Zika transmission, but illness did not develop in the four children that patients one in three had. So that is, I believe, the first um, evidence of a sexually transmitted uh, Zika virus. And we can go on. And then in 2016, uh, we started seeing reports of the first uh, female to male sexual transmission of Zika virus. This went out of New York City. And soon after that, uh, the first male-to-male sexual transmission of Zika virus out of Texas. So, and of course, as I said, Zika virus sexual transmission is well established now. We're, we're well aware of it, and there is a small percentage, but a definite percentage of people that have transmitted um, Zika virus sexually to their partner. So that leads me up to the story that really kind of shook the internet world today and or this week and I actually found it first um, out of the Spanish news source called El Paz and it says and this is Google Google translated so forgive me if it's not the syntax is not perfect but diagnosed in Madrid one of the first cases of sexual transmission of dengue in the world says Ramon E. Cajal Hospital detected the disease to a young man whose partner had traveled to an area where the condition is endemic, where Dika, or excuse me, dengue is endemic. And the hospital in Madrid diagnosed dengue in a young man who contracted the disease by maintaining unprotected relationships with another person who had acquired the virus during a trip through the Caribbean. Uh, This is one of the first sexually confirmed infections in the world as there is only reference in the scientific literature of another similar case in South Korea. And we will get to that in a a little bit. Uh, The the dengue virus was confirmed by the National Center for Microbiology of the Carlos III Health Institute. It occurred in early September, and the patient's sexual partner was another man who had recently traveled to Cuba and the Dominican Republic, countries in which the disease lives in uh, important rebound. It's it's well known to be there. Uh, the imported case had developed symptoms compatible with dengue 10 days before. Um, according to Santiago Moreno, head of infectious diseases at the hospital, the patient arrived with a high fever, um, cutaneous arrhythmia, arrhythmia, and intense pain. Uh, clinical suspicion was confirmed by the microbiology department. Uh, the absence of trips to endemic areas added the fact that the tiger mosquito Aedes albopictus, which does live in areas of Spain, such as the Mediterranean coast, where it is acted as a vector in other cases, is not settled in the community of Madrid native, where they actually were. Um, we had to do detailed research work, said Moreno. The tropical medicine unit of the hospital um, came to prove what was the source of the contagion, which was dengue virus. Um, Genetic tests have shown that the virus strain found in the samples taken from the two patients is identical and coincides with the one currently circulating in Cuba, according to epidemiologist Susana Jimenez. So that's that was the, the first report. I did search uh, the Spanish health ministry back then, last earlier last week, and um, I couldn't really find anything. So this was like the main source for my reporting on OutbreakNewsToday.com. And then it was followed up Friday um, with this information from the European CDC. And they write, on 7 November, according to media quoting health authorities, uh, Spain reported two confirmed cases of dengue in men who have sex with men residing in the municipality of Madrid in September. The most recent detected case is a man who did not travel outside of Spain recently. He developed symptoms mid-September, and he was confirmed, lab, laboratory confirmed, for dengue. The case is considered locally transmitted. After confirmation of this case, his partner, a male who presented with similar symptoms starting in the beginning of September, was tested and confirmed positive for dengue. This case had a recent travel history to Cuba and to the Dominican Republic at the end of August and the beginning of September. Uh, this case is classified as imported. 
uh, entomological investigations at the place of residence of the men in the surrounding uh, area were negative. No adult forms of Aedes albopictus were detective, detected as per the Elpaz report. Genetic sequencing confirmed that the virus strain of both cases is identical. Uh, and further investigations show that the virus is also similar to dengue viruses circulating in Cuba. So the Spain assessment is, in the absence of data supporting vectorial transmission or other known routes of exposure to dengue infection, we consider that the locally transmitted case was most likely infected through sexual transmission. The experts in Spain could not identify any case of sexual dengue transmission among uh, men who have sex with men in literature and only found a reported case of sexual transmission from a woman to a man in South Korea. Then the European CDC did an assessment. They say they're not aware of any previous report of confirmed sexual dengue transmission among MSM. However, one scientific article describes a probable female-to-male case, which again is the South Korean case. Okay, and speaking of the South Korean case, this is, um, this is from the journal Infectious Diseases, and this was from earlier this year also, and it's a letter to the editor, and it's entitled Probable Female to Male Sexual Transmission of Dengue Virus Infection. And it says here, dengue fever is managed as a legally designated disease in South Korea, and suspected cases should be reported lawfully. The Korean CDC is the governmental agency responsible for investigating every reported case of dengue and confirming the diagnosis. The patient, patient A, was a 32-year-old male. He was admitted to a hospital with several symptoms, including fever, chills, and rash, in May of 2013. The hospital reported him to the Korean CDC on the sixth day after symptom onset, along with a blood sample that was collected on the same day. Uh, we conducted reverse transcript, transcription uh, PCR and serological tests. The results were confirmed for dengue virus infection. We investigated the transmission route. The patient had not traveled abroad since 2011 and had not received any blood transfusions, organ transplants, needle stick injuries, or any other invasive medical procedure or surgery. And as far as occupation, he was a office worker not a high-risk position. As stated above, South Korea is not dengue virus endemic since public mosquito surveillance activities were never identified, have never identified mosquitoes carrying dengue virus. We concluded that environmental exposure was not possible. The only possible source of infection was his female partner, patient B, who had been ill recently with dengue fever. Patient B had visited Indonesia early in May for one week and received several mosquito bites. She started feeling ill around the time of the return and met patient A outside of her residence that day. After her return, they had intimate physical contact, including sexual intercourse, while her symptoms were present. After that day, patient B visited a few emergency departments and was admitted to the hospital with suspected dengue virus infection. Patient A the man, subsequently became ill nine days after intercourse. Um, according to our investigation, they had intercourse once before patient A became sick. The intercourse was penis to vagina and the berry usage could not be verified. So that's the case that's being talked about as uh, the deng sexual dengue transmission prior to the Spain case. And, and that's what we have. That's a letter to the editor in a journal called Infectious Diseases from earlier this year. And then there was another report, and this was in Eurosurveillance, and that's entitled Prolonged Detection of the Dengue Virus RNA in the Semen of a Man Returning from Thailand to Italy. And this is in January 2018. And it's, it's a dengue fever case in a Caucasian man returning from Thailand to Italy. Dengue virus RNA was persistently found detected in semen samples up to 37 days post-symptom onset. And if we go down to the discussion, um, here we report the presence and persistence of dengue virus RNA in semen samples of a previously healthy Caucasian man returning to Italy from Thailand with primary dengue fever. Uh, the, the RNA was detected in unfractionated serum and urine. 
Um, anyway, they conclude here saying our studies highlight the possibility of sexual transmission of dengue virus that could play a role in spreading the infection to non-endemic areas. However, no such events have been reported to date, despite the fact that in 2016 alone, uh, over 2,600 travel associated dengue cases were reported uh, to the uh, European CDC uh, that year. So further studies are warranted in order to quantify and clarify the implications of genital shedding of dengue virus for non-vector sexual transmission. So, yeah. Is a Spain case a sexually transmitted dengue case? It certainly seems like it could be possible. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been uh, truly confirmed yet. It's still considered suspect, but there is some history here um, with uh, uh, a related arbovirus. An arbovirus is a virus that's transmitted by an insect, like a mosquito or a tick. So we see it with Zika virus. Um, we see a possible case in Korea of dengue virus. We see that uh, dengue RNA is present in the uh, semen, in this case, uh, from Italy. And lastly, there's this one report out of, um, uh, I can't remember what journal that is, the Journal of the Louisiana, Louisiana State Medical Society, I believe it is. And it talks about West Nile virus meningoencephalitis possible sexual transmission. And they write, we report a previously healthy middle-aged woman who developed West Nile virus meningoencephalitis within two weeks of unprotected vaginal intercourse with her husband. This patient's husband had serologi serologically confirmed West Nile virus infection manifested by a flu-like illness and rash with sexual contact one day before the onset of symptoms. This well-documented neuroinvasive West Nile virus infection in our patient was within the incubation period of transmission, and there were no reported mosquito bite exposure. And they conclude the time frame of infection raises the possibility that her illness was sexually transmitted. And I, I think I guess if you dug through the literature, you would find more reports of uh, finding the RNA of different arboviruses, chikungunya, West Nile, and, and others, where they may have been present in uh, semen or vaginal fluids. And uh, so there is, there is clearly a, a risk here. Um, so we'll be keeping our eyes open to see if this all gets confirmed and if uh, more research is done on this really important topic, uh, particularly in the case where dengue virus is so rampant around the planet right now and uh even in the united states here in the state of florida where i am we've seen more imported dengue cases than we have in many previous years and there's just a lot of imported dengue right now so okay let me go ahead and wrap things up i appreciate you watching i hope it was useful and if you liked what you saw go ahead and subscribe to the channel like the video Comment below and please share it with your friends and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify, and the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook, at Infectious Disease News, and Twitter, at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright, The Global Dispatch, Incorporated, 2019.